come to the meditation, you should come with an attitude of respect. You're doing something important here. And you're trying to master a skill. A skill where there are standards. The Buddha set the standards very high. And you want to have respect for that fact. And you want to have respect for the dangers that come when you don't practice up to standard. And they talk about having acceptance in the practice. The main thing you have to accept is that you're constantly acting on action, <clears throat> acting on intentions. The way you experience things is shaped by your intentions. And those intentions can be skillful or not. And you have to accept the fact that you've got a lot of unskillful ones, a lot of unskillful habits you've been developing over time. And it's very easy to bring justifications for those unskillful habits. Society is full of them. As John 1 once said, the society of normal people, ordinary people, is this culture of defilement. Greed, anger, and delusion, and their justifications. Saying if we didn't have greed, society wouldn't develop. If we didn't have anger, we couldn't bring about justice. We couldn't stand up for our rights. And even though there's no conscious defense of delusion in those terms, people are constantly defending the fact that, well, a little bit of alcohol, say, or a little bit of playing around. We need to get away from our miseries, away from our suffering. And there's an awful lot of denial going on. People learn to live with denial as an ordinary part of every day. The fact that we're growing ill, aging, we're all going to die. Society is in huge denial around this. We tend to pick up those habits from our upbringing, pick up those habits from everything around us. And so when we sit down and meditate and all of a sudden find ourselves face to face with greed, aversion, and delusion, part of us likes to defend it, say that it's okay. But true acceptance means accepting the fact that you're creating suffering for yourself and other people when you give in to these traits. And so you have to be very careful, you have to be very alert very vigilant as you practice. This is why the Buddha's last words were to be heedful, or to bring about completion, he said, through heedfulness. The completion there is developing the factors of the path to their full power. So we're not just playing around here. We're doing something serious, not grim. One of the things you notice about the, the great Johns is that they all have a good sense of humor. And one, one of the best ways of dealing with your defilements is learning to laugh at them and to laugh with yourself when you are not up to standard. But there are standards. You want the mind to stay with the breath. You want to evaluate and adjust the breath. Keep your attention focused on the breath until it gives rise to a sense of ease and fullness. Because it's only when the mind is settled like this it's going to see anything clearly. Yesterday I read somebody complaining they'd read a passage where 
someone had said that you know, jhana is necessary for awakening. So, no, that can't be the case. My teacher says that you see your defilements most clearly when the defilements are really strong. Strong lust, strong anger. That's when you're going to gain awakening. But where are you in relation to that anger? Where are you in relation to that lust? When it's stirring up the mind, you can't see things clearly. There has to be at least part of the mind that's standing very still and watching whatever is happening. It's not the least bit stirred by those things, otherwise you just slip along with them. And again, you accept, well, this is the normal way of the mind. But it doesn't have to be that way. The Buddha standards are set out in the path, factors of the path, and you want to have respect for that fact. We're not here just to meditate as we please. We have to check ourselves to see, is there anything we're doing that's causing stress? It starts out with causing harm to oneself and other people. You want to check for that. And you learn through observing the precepts to cause less and less harm. Then it moves into more subtle levels of stress in the mind. Finally, even there's just the subtlest disturbance caused by the concentration itself. And what you want to accept is, one, that it's happening, and two, that it's coming from something you're doing, a perception you're holding on to, an attitude you're holding on to. That's what you have to learn how to accept. It requires having a mature attitude towards your own weak points and a mature attitude towards your, the areas where you're still lacking. Learning on the one hand not to beat yourself up over these things, but on the, on the other hand learning how not just to say, well, that's, that's okay. It doesn't really matter. Mature acceptance means accepting responsibility and accepting that these are deep-worn habits in the mind, and it's going to take time to learn how to overcome them. But you do want to overcome them, because it's also good to accept the fact that there is something better in life. After all, there are four noble truths. There's not just suffering, the cause of suffering, but there's also the path, and there's the cessation of suffering. Those things can be a part of life, too. A lot of people wouldn't want to be bothered. But again, that's our choice. And John Fuang talks about the devas that get bothered by our practice. Afraid that we'll go past them. Well, it's not just Davis. There are other human beings out there who don't like the idea that maybe there really is a deathless and it really is attainable through human effort. They prefer to think, well, it's not really true, and that what the Buddha taught was simply teaching us how to learn how to accept things as they are and just be perfectly okay with them. Because otherwise, it, there's a path to follow and there's effort that has to be put forth. You have to be disciplined. And a lot of people don't like to hear this. They don't want to accept that. Their idea of acceptance is very narrow. But if you accept the fact that there really is a deathless, there is a dimension where there is no suffering, a dimension outside of space and time, and it can be reached, it can be touched through human effort. That's learning how to accept your potential, and you will learn how to accept the demands of your potential. Nobody's forcing you to do this, but if you want to make the most of your, your potential, this is what you've got to do. All the Buddha's shoulds are conditional. He never forced anybody to do anything. But he said, if you want to attain the state of peace, this is what you have to do. 
This is what you should do. It's required by the principle of cause and effect. So we want to have respect for that fact. Have respect for your own potential. Respect for your desire for true happiness. And accept the fact that, yes, it is a long path. The people for whom the path is short They've already gone along the path. You read those stories about all the people the Buddha taught in his time. It was like he was picking flowers in a field where the flowers were already blooming. And who knows where we were at the time. Or you might say he picked all the fruit that was already ripe, and now we're gradually ripening ourselves. So it may take time may take effort, dedication, discipline. All those virtues that tend to get short shrifted in our society. But we're not here as consumers, which is apparently is what our society would like us to be. We're here to discipline ourselves, because that's what's required. Have respect for that fact and accept whatever comes along as part of the training. Whatever the, re tra <coughs> whatever the training requires, try to be up for it. This is the force that John says say is what really constitutes the middle way. In other words, appropriate effort, appropriate for whatever the occasion is, whatever the defilement is whatever your state of mind is. And sometimes it's very delicate work, very refined, very easy. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it takes a lot of effort. You have to sit through a, a good amount of pain and struggle over some of your defilements. Because when the defilements come up, it's not the case that they're obviously bad. They have their hooks. They're sticky. It's like Velcro. They have their appealing side. So there's going to be a struggle back and forth. Learn how to accept that as well. Because when you do, ultimately you get to the point where the mind doesn't need acceptance or rejection. Apparently that's one of the qualities of an arahant. The arahant's mind is beyond acceptance, beyond rejection. But to get there, you have to learn how to distinguish what really needs to be accepted and really needs to be rejected. and bring the proper amount of respect so that you do it right. Bring your practice up to standard. Don't try to pull the st Buddha's standards down to your level. Try to pull yourself up to his. <laughs>